genuine insanity. And I I am like, holy shit, this this fucking person's a wild card. He's literally E Joker. Okay, so this story is pretty fucking great. It involves autism, legit autism. <laughs> All right. Hackers, financial crime, riot games, League of Legends, and streamers. So you said about a lot of things I like in there. All together. <laughs> I, I just kind of wonder where how it's all put together. This now. was like, one of those like Shavant moments that I was like, God damn it. I, I, I have an inkling of what happened here. I'm going to let you guys kind of pretty much watch this unimpeded. And then uh, I'll give you my thoughts on it. Like towards the end, like we're probably going to step somewhere around here. If you were playing games on PC in the early 2010s, there's a real good chance you tried out the smash hit success MOBA, League of Legends. The game was everywhere, and by late 2012, it was considered the most popular game on PC globally, as well as one of the most popular games ever created. But, of course, massive success also comes with massive responsibility. Riot Games, the creator of League of Legends, quickly discovered that attention can be both good and bad. This is the story of Jason, the hacker who went to war with Riot Games. The original investigation and reporting were conducted by eSports Hall of Fame journalist Richard Lewis. The brilliant write-up can be found at the link in the video description, as well as- And you've never heard of this story at all? No, and I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm actually shocked I did. I'm disappointed in myself, actually. <laughs> this, this seems right up my alley. This is good. Where he posts his new work. So now let's travel back to the bygone era of League of Legends early lore, fame, and infamy. In the early days of Twitch and League of Legends ascending to the most popular but also most watched video game in the world, there existed a now disgraced content creator called Phantom Lord. During one of Phantom Lord's streams, he suddenly found himself kicked out of his account. He tried to log back in, but couldn't. During this time, he was still live, remarking about how he might have been hacked. Does he get hacked? <laughs> Think so. And spoiler, he had been. When he regained control of the account, he discovered that the hacker had transferred the account to the Brazilian servers. This was all captured live and exists as the origin story. Wait, that's for Jason this guy? The yeah. I remember hearing about that back when it happened. Oh, this gets so much worse. This is oh, like, that... this was the toe test of the water for this guy. Uh... I remember that because it was so funny because everybody was like spamming in this chat BR number one ja 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 <laughs> uh, of like because you know, like, that was a meme back then when it, uh, you would run into like Brazilians they would say yeah. that BR as number one and this <laughs> chat was spamming it when it, when it happened yeah I remember seeing that I didn't know oh this, this is gets overrated. nuts this and I'm great. gonna I'm gonna pause at one point because like I could tell you and Necro both like kind of like this a little bit I want to see what your thoughts and opinions are at one point when we get to the response and then I'm gonna like totally fuck with you so <laughs> so usually after being the victim of a hack the assumption is that the user is to blame because we all assume that our details that secure the account are safeguarded by very basic practices by the company in question in this case we would be incorrect in that assumption. Phantom Lord had not handed out his password. It wasn't password one, two, three. He hadn't downloaded some malicious code that gave access to the hacker. It was not his fault. It was, according to reports, the fault of Riot Games and a data breach that occurred in 2012. So it may have started with Phantom Lord, but messing with streamers was just the beginning because right now, Jason was about to begin committing absolute chaos. You see, back at this time, Riot Games and pretty much every other video game company maintained a forum for their games community. This was the way that users shared their feedback, discussed the game, found friends, and any other number of community-based activities. The forum was, of course, moderated and maintained by Riot Games themselves. But it was here that an account named Devil started to make threats to that community, saying that he was going to release information on other users, essentially claiming to have the ability to dox members of that community. Each message that was left was signed what? with the name Jason. Now, before we go on explaining how Jason continues to up the ante, <laughs> exposing himself to the world and making Riot Games look really, really bad, let's discuss what motivates an individual to do what Jason was now doing. There's only a handful of reasons that somebody would risk going to prison for hacking a video game developer. The first is obviously for the financial motivation, stealing data to sell, blackmailing the company, using the game code to develop hacks. Whatever the plan is, the end goal is to make money. Another reason could be personal. It could be a vendetta against the company, the product, or perhaps one or more people working there. One more reason could be as an agent of chaos. To simply do it 
because you can, because it's funny, because it's interesting, or because the attention it will receive. Of course, most times it's not black or white, or 0 to 100. Often, it will be a little bit from column A, a little bit from column B, and so on. But looking at this situation, it seems fairly obvious. I mean, if you were hacking for money, or for personal reasons, there's a very high chance you'd want to remain anonymous for as long as possible, hopefully forever, so that you can just escape with the money. But in the case of Jason, while he would eventually start to cash in, clearly he was doing this predominantly for the attention, which is why he initially went after the biggest streamer in League of Legends, why he was going after high MMR players, anyone prominent in the community, and also signing his name each time. It was a calling card at the scene of a crime, creating a breadcrumb trail leading back to his work. He wanted everybody to know it's Jason. I don't think he wanted to be caught, but he obviously wanted to generate fame from the actions. So over the coming days and weeks, Jason continued to gain access to high-profile League of Legends accounts, transferring them to Brazilian servers, and threatening people on chat rooms and forums. It was all about that power. And power is exactly what Jason had, because to make it all the more chaotic, he somehow gained access to an administrator account on the forums, and was using this to orchestrate a very confusing pantomime. There was no way to tell what a real message from a real user was, or a message that had been created or edited by Jason. At the time, one user by the name of GOP Gangster used the forum to recount his experience with Jason. He was first contacted and told in no uncertain terms that Jason was going to steal his League of Legends account. Now, of course, we've been on the internet for a long time, you and me, right? We've been playing video games for decades. We probably all had the same messages. Somebody gets angry about something you did in the game or angry about something you said online, and then they said they're going to report you, that their dad works at Disney or Bungie and they're going to ban you. They're going to hack you. They're going to find you in real life and kiss you on the lips. Whatever it is, we've all heard the same things. Usually we laugh, never we play into that. it, we say go ahead and do this, <laughs> maybe a little bit more colourfully, but we never ever believe them, because we've heard it so many times and it's so outlandish. But in this case, with Jason, it was all true. Jason had the means to do what he said, he could back it up. GOP Gangster found this out very quickly, because suddenly his account quit the rank team he was part of, at which point one of his friends messaged the account saying, why have you left? The account responded with four simple words, I am God. Jason. The account was then transferred to the Oceanic servers. Now in an isolated incident, again we could blame the individual here, but according to GOP Gangster, his password was incredibly complex and random, making it very unlikely to have just been guessed or brute forced. And of course, the main concern wasn't the League of Legends account, it was the fact his credit card had been saved on the account, meaning the hacker could have begun making purchases on the League of Legends store, or more concerning, if the password was leaked, maybe his other details and credit card were too. This is just a simple example of what Jason was doing, causing havoc on the forums and the whole League of Legends scene. He was like the boogeyman. People were increasingly aware of his actions, and they were now demanding answers from Riot Games. How was this possible? What were Riot doing about it? Was their data safe? These answers appeared on August 13th, where a Riot staff member posted, reassuring people that there was nothing to worry about, that Jason was simply a troll, that there was no data breach, everyone was safe, and people just needed to calm down. Another Riot account posted shortly after, echoing this sentiment, stating that the hacks were brute force only, and a few accounts impacted. Now, what do you think of this response, just first of all? I mean, back then I kind of believed it. Because I remember there being like an unhinged dude on the forums, <coughs> and I thought he was just like a 4chan or some shit. Okay. But you would have bought, you would have bought this, right? Well, yeah, because brute forcing is so common. Okay, like, well I'm about to destroy your world in no way a oh, real God. data breach. But of course that doesn't make sense, because for clarity, a brute force refers to a trial and error approach to cracking an account password. Imagine throwing the alphabet at a login screen millions of times in quick succession with any number of combinations until you find the password. This method was very popular in the early days of the internet, but nowadays it would be an incredibly poor approach to user security if a company allowed for a brute force attack to occur with any kind of success which made this explanation incredibly suspect and surely not one that a Riot employee would ever freely hand over to the public. And they didn't, because neither of these two Riot account posts were actually Riot employees. Both accounts were hacked, and it was Jason himself. <laughs> Fucking face. Oh my god, that is like the, one of the best fucking covers <laughs> holy shit i respect it so hard i feel fucking like billy awesome. mays but wait there's more like this will get like a level upon a level upon a level like very quickly like this story is fucking nuts
Like I remember just the unhinged devil guy on the forum, but I didn't realize it was all connected. Because I would just see him go on and be like, I will destroy you. I'm like, lol, okay. Like, I'm just, I just like watched it. I didn't know this dude was like some unhinged anon, like, anon guy, it sounds like. like so there's going to be uh, another level to this that you're not going to expect. Um, but it's gonna now that you know this, you'll suspect it. Um, there's going to be another thing, and then a third or a fourth thing that's gonna happen. So there's three more things that are gonna happen here that are just insane. This is almost like this is on unhinged on the level of like mod dead. Which when we do a sequel, if we do a sequel stream, that's something I want to send you is all the Jagex shit from RuneScape. Oh, there's man. a lot of history there. But yeah, this this is insane on so many like there is an insanity here, genuine insanity, and I I am like holy shit, this this fucking person's a wild card. He's literally E Joker. Because <laughs> I, because like, like when he was going on about it, I was just in my head that meme like I'm the Joker, baby. Like that's what, <laughs> what was playing in my head. Wait till you get the rest of this. This was all publicly oh happening, God. but no one really had any idea the extent or levels of access Jason had acquired. You see, he wasn't just terrorizing the forums or the high-ranking professional players for a laugh. He was also selling rare legacy skins for two to eight hundred dollars each on a third-party forum. As a result of the chaos, Riot forced users to change their passwords, which is a common response when dealing with a severe data breach. They also promised to overhaul security, but at no point did they go on in detail about what had exactly happened, who was at risk, or what level of security breach had occurred. According to Richard Lewis's report, Jason claimed to have access to the details of over 24.5 million accounts. That's insane. That is right. insane. And so, like, you would think with, like, the forced password change, that would take care of it. Yeah. Though, of course, this would be trusting in the word of an individual who called himself God, which is inherently untrustworthy. During the discussion with Jason himself, he planned to sell the data on the black market for millions of dollars, but this is, in my opinion, inconsistent with Jason's actions. Maybe he was going to do this, but as we discussed previously, if this was all financially motivated, it would have been in his interest for the hack to remain quiet. And this was anything but quiet, because for his next performance, he hacked Riot President Mark Merrill's Twitter account. <laughs> so here's the Jesus escalation Christ. that, like, you probably, like, it's not as surprising, right? This is the one that I said wouldn't be as surprising. Yeah, but it's unhinged. He reminds me of Light Yagami, like, I am god of the new world. Like, this is that level of unhinged. There's more. Because for his next performance, he hacked Riot President Mark Merrill's Twitter account and began leaking unreleased Riot video game concepts and images, as well as talking about Jason's earlier hacks, again just underlining what he'd been doing. He ended every Twitter post saying, Jason, god. He even threatened to release more private company information on these games if my- Now does it also make sense the way I asked you, like, have you ever heard of a guy named Jason? And I put parentheses, God. Yeah, I thought you were talking about, like, Jason and the Argonauts, like, the God story. Like, no, okay, this is Mark Merrill didn't contact amazing. him privately. One hour later, Mark Merrill was back in control of his own Twitter account, which begs the question, what was it they discussed? Either way, Riot Games was now finished playing this particular game. Subpoenas were filed to Google and Yahoo, specifically targeting information on the accounts JKing and JasonKing999. These, of course, linked to Jason and his account trading business. Within a month, the Australian Cybercrime Unit had acquired an address and identity for who they believed to be the notorious Jason. The raid occurred, electronic equipment was confiscated, and the suspect was revealed. 21-year-old Shane Duffy, a young man with Asperger's Syndrome who had been homeschooled since age 9. <laughs> can get kneeled on Asperger's is superior. Asper two beat Sonic two. <laughs> so like, this would like flag the end of this story. You would think. Yeah. It doesn't. <clears throat> Jesus. Shane Duffy was then confirmed as Jason, the person who had been publicly going to war with Riot Games for multiple years now, winning every battle and making them look incredibly silly. And it turns out it wasn't just Riot Games that was a victim of Jason. According to Richard Lewis's report, Jason was part of a group and they were also linked to hacks on Neopets and several other esports websites. 
He even went on to tell Richard Lewis how this all began, which was an initial hack in 2012 on Riot Games, but calling anything afterwards a hack would be wrong, as the rest of it was just down to Riot's ineptitude. You see, they had actually brute forced a password. This wasn't in the League of Legends account system, instead it was a senior Riot staff account. Riot even discovered this attack and asked all staff members to change their passwords, but this one senior staff member did not. Using that account, the hackers accessed Riot servers, added a backdoor software, and basically did whatever they wanted for a long time. Again, just for clarity, as Richard states in the article, it's impossible to know whether any of this is true, as it's the word of the hacker. This sounds legit. Yeah, I can see this being the corporate. No, trust us, we're secure now. This sounds legit. Like, you would actually go through and exploit. Like, that's what happens quite frequently is, like, they find a terminal to exploit or stuff. Like, that's how the NASA shit got hacked. That's how the fucking uh, judiciary branch got hacked. Like, they were able to find, like, a point, a single point of access. And then the from that, part. they backdoored it so they can come and go as they need. And then slowly, like, just over time engineer it and what it sounds like to me is there's a step that happened here further this group got this stuff <clears throat> got all the information scraped everything they wanted kind of left the a husk probably took the data sold it and like this guy was like tangentially involved in this group and at some point they're like okay we're done with this do whatever you want with it man and just gave it to this fucking random 21 year old autistic dude in australia who just oh. wreaked havoc, but there's still more. There's more. Yes. Himself. Oh my but God. But that is his explanation for what happened, and Riot's details on the situation are unclear. So, with Shane Duffy, or Jason, as he preferred, or maybe God, being caught, you would think his reign of terror would all come to an end. But that's where you'd be wrong, because his most disruptive and disrespectful act was still to come. This is where it gets fucking crazy, and I bet uh, you... You looked the part. <laughs> I bet you, you have heard of this, because I've heard of it, and I've never played a drop of League of Legends. And I know about this. And I had no idea it was tied to all this shit. You see, while on bail for his incredibly serious crimes, Shane Duffy created a website called lolip-op.com. Even from my... Ever hear of that? Yeah. You know what it was? I mean, you'll you'll get you'll get a layout of it if you if you don't know, but like, I've heard of this site. Yeah, I heard the rumors of it. Like, I was like, it was one of those things where it's like, I was like, what? I'm not gonna touch that, you know? Like, yeah. lollipop, lolip dot op or yeah. dash op. Yeah. Yeah. Own time playing League of Legends, I remember the absolute chaos this website caused in high-ranking games. It was utterly insane. During the data breach at Riot Games, part of this breach included IP addresses for what he claimed was 24.5 million accounts. So users could pay access to this website, input any player account name, and it would return an IP address that would possibly be associated with that player. They could then go to another That's section worse of the website, than I thought. input that. Here's the thing. Here's the thing where it gets nuts. That would possibly be associated with that player. They could then go to another section of the website, input that IP address, and the website would perform a distributed denial of service on the IP address, essentially turning off their internet and dropping them from the game. This was a crazy service, which was generating Duffy a reported $1,000 per day. Duffy then went That's on Reddit and defended- insane! Yeah. I, I thought it was just like an IP scraper or something. No, no. Like, or- <laughs> like you could like, use it you could pay for just the service and like use it and like just be like oh hey i know where you are and like that could probably freak out some young kid on the internet but like the fact that this guy had another layer to it and would actually had a a ddos script built you could literally just you were paying for internet terrorism yes like yes he was literally an internet mercenary at that point yes Wait till you find out when he did this. Defended his actions oh as well as bragged about his antics. All in the public eye, of course, and still on bail for his previous activities. Still on bail for his previous activities. He's running <laughs> so this. They're, they're watching him and he's like rubbing it in their face. Yes. Chad. Just a fucking straight up Chad. <laughs> now, also, I, I there's going to be something I'll point out at the end here, but... Unsurprisingly, he was then arrested once more and had his equipment confiscated again. This time, and to add validity to his claims of how widespread the operation had become, the police also confiscated a reported $110,000 in Bitcoin. According to courts, once this finally made it there in 2016, Shane's antics cost Riot Games...
They confiscated a hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin in 2016. That'd be millions now. Yes. Hundreds of thousands oh of dollars God. in damages and much more in loss of goodwill from their customer base. Duffy, of course, pled guilty to nine charges, which included fraud and hacking. He was sentenced to two and a half years in prison with immediate parole and given an 18 month suspended jail term. What do you think of the sentence? That's like. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're literally like, that is so light compared to like leaking IP addresses, which would have like personal, like identifiable location data yeah like not like you know ips aren't like you live here at this house on main street but it gives you, <laughs> you it gives you the city you know what i mean like it gives you a close enough like rate you know what i mean like jesus I, I like oh. necro's fucking term here the w-a-o-m-d weaponized autism of mass destruction <laughs> that's exactly what it is this is like this is like Super uh, autism. Uh, Hello, GG. So, uh, which one of you is Jason? Nah, no, I'm not rich enough. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I, I had this level of autism. I can't believe you actually found this video, Pat, because I watched this like a month ago or something. Like that. <laughs> Leave it to me. I literally look, and when I say I watch everything on YouTube, I literally watch everything on YouTube. I have UFO drama for a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for that one. <laughs> it's just as autistic as it sounds, too. <laughs> like... <laughs> meaning he did not go to prison for his actions, in large part due to his Asperger syndrome, which was given as an example of his inability to understand the consequences of his actions. This was the very first time that Riot Games faced off with a hacker who may or may wait not a minute, have wait been a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> He was autistic enough to only get like two months probation immediately after like a two year sentence. Yeah. And they're using the autism as an excuse. Yeah. Because he couldn't understand the you know consequences of his actions. Yep. Welcome but to he Austria did it just land. To fuck with people. Yeah. He he knew what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. Like literally, he was LARPing around his fucking Kira. That's exactly what I said <laughs> earlier. I said he's like light Yagami, like I am god of the new world. <laughs> oh, I, love, I don't know if you heard me say that, but the fact that you came to the same conclusion <laughs> filled me with so much joy. <laughs> Well, no, I didn't hear you say it. Like, I was tuning in and out because I was going between you and Kino Casino. Yeah. 